Well, good morning, everybody. It's a Saturday morning, and it is Halloween. Um, so we have a very blessed Halloween and a safe one, too, as well. Um, last night, the kids were going around and gathering candy here in Lake City. Um, we never get a whole lot of kids over at the Parsonage. I'm not sure why. They seem to go to hit other parts of town um, a little more um, harder, I guess, a little bit more diligently. We uh, we don't seem to always get that many. We didn't go through a, even a... a half a bag of candy or whatever so poor me i have some candy i have to eat up so that's sad uh it's tough it's difficult so pray for me <laughs> kidding uh anyway um today we are uh, continuing on of course in the gospel of luke and we're continuing on in the ninth chapter seems like we've been in chapter nine for a while but chapter nine's got a lot to it and we're getting close to the end um we're closing on it folks um, so today we're in chapter 9, we're looking at verses 49 to 56, and this follows right along with, or right on the heels, of course, what we talked about yesterday, uh, where the, the uh, disciples are out there arguing about who among them is the greatest, and so we have kind of a continuation of that kind of a, of a rivalry going on here, um, for really for both of these stories that we're going to look at today. Uh, there's two incidents we're going to talk about today, um, but prime, really mostly the first, I suspect, but the second as well. So let's take a look uh, with that um, to Luke chapter 9, uh, verses 49 to 56. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not stop him, for whoever is not against you is for you. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. Okay, um, first we have the story of these, they're, they're, they've seen someone else out there casting out demons in Jesus' name. Um, and of course, um, I, I just started Thursday, I took uh, Scotty to see the doctor and I, I started reading a book I've got here, actually it's about the Catholic Church and exorcism. Um, it, just light topic, you know, some easy reading. <laughs> so, um, any rate, um, so it's a you know, they're, here they're ta tossing out someone's tossing out demons in Christ's name, um, but they tried to stop him. And Jesus says, "Well, what are you doing? Um, why would you do that? He's he's you know he whoever's not against us is for us." Um, I think there's a couple things going on here. First, in, in the disciples' mind, I have to suspect. There's, just, there's some rivalry going on here. Remember, it wasn't too many stories back that we had the boy with the unclean spirit, right? And it was throwing him into the fire. And Luke's, that's what it says in Mark's gospel. I don't think it says that in Luke's. But, um, and Jesus has to be called upon to cast this demon out. The disciples were, were not able. And here we've got them seeing someone else that's out there that's not even someone that's followed. Now, now if he knows about Jesus, he's obviously heard about Jesus and probably heard with Jesus. Uh, but he does not follow with us. It's like he's not following along all the time. He's he may be somebody uh, that 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 heard Jesus speak or heard of Jesus speaking and has using Jesus' name realizes who Jesus apparently realizes who Jesus is, doesn't he? If he's using Jesus' name rather than the name of God or Yahweh, okay. Uh, so apparently he gets it and knows what's going on. Um, and, you know, like the disciples, the last two times Jesus foretold his death and told them, you know, what, what he was and all of that, um, they, they seem to not want to believe that, 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 that he's really the Messiah. Um, even though they said it earlier in the chapter, it's like it, you can say sometimes, you can say things sometimes, but it just doesn't really register, right? You ever do that? We all do that. Um, but at any rate, there's some, there seems to be some rivalry here. And like, how can he, they be doing this when we failed? Or, um, but let's project this into our lives. Um, I think this is a, some of these scriptures are things we could definitely take to heart when we're um, we're looking at other churches and other ministries, and and we're feeling rivalry with them. You know, they're doing great. Their church is growing, or their church is doing these projects, and we feel like. Oh, you know, we should be doing that, and so we feel some jealousy there. So I think there we should we can can. can 
should come back to these verses of 49 and 50 and and realize that they're um, they're convict you know we're convicted by those verses we shouldn't feel a rival with other others doing Christ's work um, there's also times when we um, we question other uh, denominations or even others within our denomination and that's kind of follows that, that kind of happens a lot with the disciples and the Baptists because we have American Baptists we have a lot of variation in theology within our denominations um, both of them are very diverse denominations with theology and we can have people all the way from one end of the spectrum to the other and so we can have both sides pointing fingers and saying you know you're not doing the right thing um, and at some points that's justified there are some places where I think there we are off the end of the chart both ways I always say I'm more of a moderate um, and, and I don't believe moderate is a dirty word moderate means someone that looks at each thing and, and tries to discern whether they are they are crazy or, you know they're, they're, there's hypocrisy in in that following this teaching or that teaching and not following this teaching or that teaching unfortunately I think a lot of times we we uh, we get wrapped up on whether we're a left or lefty or a righty and we we don't really think about the individual elements uh, per se we just jump into that into that identity of of, of I'm a progressive or I'm a or a conservative um, so we have to be careful with that talking about the uh, the uh, village the Samaritan village there uh, Jesus is first of all in verse 51 Jesus is now turned his face towards Jerusalem now it's the beginning of the end folks uh, it's it's start he, he's he's focused now on making that journey to Jerusalem and his ultimate end he's he's foretold it twice just within this chapter and now he's made that move he has turned his face to Jerusalem and he's focused on it um, and it says that, that that's why the Samaritans didn't receive him, and and that's an interesting thing. Perhaps there the idea is there that uh, you know the Samaritans didn't believe in Jerusalem as the place to go to pray. They went to uh, uh, was it Mount Her Hermon? Hermon? I can't remember now. I can't think. Say uh, my brain's you know, having one of those senior moments. Um, but at any rate, they don't believe that you have to go to Jerusalem. You know that that's not it's not that all that. And so maybe that's part of the reason why they're like, well, why is he so fixated on Jerusalem? Come see us. We're more important. Um, but Jesus knows it's a witness that has to happen in Jerusalem. So they just don't understand the whole story. Um, but I think there where we, we need to take a lesson from this is that, that when we, you know, uh, evangelize, when we, when we witness to someone and they reject our witness, we tend to want to just burn them down. We'd like to really give them the dickens when, when we, we want to really chew them out and tell them how big a fool they are and call down fire on them, right? Yeah. The thing we have to remember is that not everybody is ready to come to Christ the first time they're witnessed to or the second time they're witnessed to or the third time they're witnessed to or the fifth time or the six hundredth time or the thousandth time. Um, but if we burn them down, We've made a charred mass there for the next person to come as a witness that has to first of all get through that char before they can get into the spirit of the person and to touch their spirit. So let's not do that. Let's not burn down those that won't listen to us because by golly, we're all that important. And you know, I kind of remember back there about who's the greatest, you know, back in verse 20 or 46 and about four, verse 59 and four, or 49 and 50. Uh, remember all that. We're, we're, it's not about us chewing them out and feeling, because <laughs> that's us feeling good about ourselves. Like, hey, we didn't listen to us, so by golly, we did. We gave them the right act. Um, maybe we better. It's better for us just to move along and let the next person come and witness to them and see if they can't touch their heart and bring them to Christ. Um, I think that's a lot smarter idea. I think it's a lot more godly idea. I think that's the way Christ wants us to be. Uh, Jesus uh, leaves that Samaritan village alone. We'll be back for them. Okay, so with that, I'm going to leave you be, and I'm going to ask you on this beautiful Saturday. It looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day, and this next week looks like it's going to be wonderful. So hey, if you got outdoor things you need to do coming up, I think Tuesday is supposed to be like almost 70 degrees um, in November. Praise God! Isn't that wonderful? So with that, I'm going to let you go and have a very blessed day. And please, on this Halloween day, be safe, taking the kitties around 
Uh, if you've got little kitties here in Lake City, we're going to be up with Clyde and I think Scotty and I will be up in the square with some candy for the little people. Uh, bring them on up. I don't need to have costumes if they, if they don't have costumes. Just come on up and see us. Uh, Scotty and Clyde and I, we always love to see the little people. So have a very blessed day. And as I always say, be a blessing to someone today. We will see you tomorrow morning at 10 for worship in the sanctuary. Hopefully you'll be here in person, but if not, tune in on Facebook. God bless. Bye-bye.